Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend, had a fantastic weekend. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, first off, I want to start off by saying last week we did the poor man's flea market and uh, we found this, what I thought might have been a drop, uh, drop box, but John Armstrong, a friend of the show, and that's why I love you people, because you come up and you find, I can come up with anything and one of you will find it. And John found out what this was. It is a uh, Honeywell 6920 under, uh, it's a drop box is what it was. And uh, so he found it. They still make it today. Hard to find. I don't know if they still produce it today, but that you could still buy them around. So, uh, John, thank you so much for finding out what that was. Also, again, on this week's uh, Poor Man's Flea Market, came across some other stuff, uh, you know. And you know I don't take any big stuff or whatever. I like to take stuff we talk about on the show. I mentioned this to my girlfriend. She goes, I hope you took this. But uh, remember the old-fashioned roll-top desks? My sister has a really nice one, an antique one that she's had for many years. But uh, I came across a small one. This is a reproduction. Check this out. Now, it was obvious that a child had it because of the stickers and the, some of the... But, uh, you know, all that can be easily taken off, and it was uh, easily fixable. If you did need a piece of furniture, which I don't... But if you did, you, it's easily fixable and cleaned up, and, it, and the roll top, which is the important part, was there and worked fine. And But I did take one piece of, of wood. Let me show you why and, and what I took. Now, what I did take was this piece of uh, board. And this is that slide-out board that goes above the drawers that uh, you can use as a, you know, something to either rest something on or write on or put a typewriter on or a laptop or something. Anyway, I grabbed this. All these, that whole piece, it, it, although it looks like oak, it's just a veneer. And a veneer is a thin piece of, of wood to make it look more expensive. Years ago, veneers were very popular. Um, and it's an oak veneer over a, a kind of a chipboard. This is a chipboard and it has a secondary veneer, which they glue the oak to. So it's a nice piece of wood for if I wanted to mount a motor or a lot of projects I do. I always, you know, when I see a piece of solid wood like this, I grab it. There's a hundred uses for it. Now, you saw that the, it had a lot of markers and things like that. Some kid went to town on it and, uh, I said, but this is such an easy thing to, to, to take care of, to wipe off these markers. And I'll show you how we're going to get rid of it. But, um, you know, to, to let something go like that, if, especially that it can be fixed. Let me show you how we get rid of marker. Marker, usually it's two things. Acetone or lacquer thinner will usually clear up marker. Let's do that right away. Here we're going to use lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner is usually rough on any, any of the skin, any of these chemicals. You should always glove up when you're wearing them. But here we're just going to take a little bit here. And wipe it off and look at this look at that see what I mean? lack of thinner is is a, a thinner for usually markers things like that so let me show you how we'll wipe this down now you see how quickly and easily the lack of thinner got rid of the marker now it also takes remember lack of thinner will remove some of the top coat of the wood so what we're gonna do to re kind of restore that a little bit so we're gonna use some Johnson paste wax only because it's a softer wax and uh, we just want to make a put a little sheen on here. So we'll wipe on some Johnson paste wax and then we'll buff it off with a rag and I'll show you what that looks like. And there we go. We have a nice board now for any kind of projects we want to put. If I want to mount a motor on and a switch, you know, it's a it's a nice board. It's it's inexpensive free. You can't beat the price. So that's why I always pick up uh, some stuff like this. And you could see we could have took marker. We could have really redid that uh, roll top desk easily. But who's got the room, right? Okay, next up, uh, last video, we did a poor man's flea market. A guy, a gentleman by the name of Jim Johnston, good friend of the show. 
Jim said, you know, I wonder if people, wouldn't it be funny if your neighbors watch your show and they're actually putting this stuff out to see if you can restore it? And we all got a big kick out of that. And I said, you know, you laugh. But I said, you know what's so funny? I'm walking by this house in the same house that put out that water meter that I loved and restored. There was this sitting on top, again, on top of the garbage. Now, I look at it and I say, oh, you know, first thing you think of, maybe a drill case or something. I couldn't, I couldn't open it. It was, you know, kind of dark. And I'm like, how do you open it? Then I realized, oh, it opens this way. So I pop the top off. And I look inside. Look at this. And here it is. And if this person does watch my show, please let me know. Uh, look what they took. First of all, I thought this might have been a stick of dynamite. It's, uh, it says railway fuse, but it's a flare. And a uh, 10 minute flare. Always can use them. You know, these, this thing's unused and good to have. And look at all these drill bits here. I mean, how, for me, for me to find this, you know, it's not like you're talking about a guy that scraps metal and it's just going who don't care about tools. You're talking about me to find this. So let me separate this and see what we got, what kind of drills we have, because somebody left a nice little present for me. Okay, so this was the find that we got, and, and what a nice find it was. First of all, they got a few spade bits, assorted spade bits over here, different types. You know, they just need a soak and evaporus. They're easily sharpened, nice bits, couple screwdriver bits, one for the old, for the Yankee uh, uh, spring screwdrivers. We have some regular bits here. Seems like a few probably came out of a set. All these are in, look at the the, head, the tip on there is in really, you know, they're in good shape there. None of them are, are chewed up on the tips. However, look at these, look, look at these, right? The only thing that I did find was about, I don't know, 10% maybe were spun in the chuck. You see here? This is what happens when they get spun in the chuck or something. Now, somebody tried to grind this here, but I'll, I'll show you a few of them here, like this one here. This is typical. If a drill bit spins in the chuck, it leaves these little ridges or whatever where it catches. And now, if you work in a machine shop, or possibly this is a uh, an aircraft, this is for using for uh, countersinking holes in aircraft. It's adjustable. You see, it's an adjustable countersink here that you can... You turn this like this and you can adjust it to any depth you want. And these are expensive and they're only at, you only find these usually in aircraft or industry or something. So what I'm thinking is possibly this gentleman might have worked in some kind of industry where when they were using bits, because a lot of them the same size, when they were using bits, if they should, if they did get spun in the chuck, like if they caught or something like here, see that? What they would do is they take it out and they throw it into a bin and usually they get thrown out. But sometimes these guys would take them home, you know what I mean? Especially when they figure, well, it's a still a good bit. Now, there's two things you could do with that. When you have a bit that is chowdered up like this in the back, you can cut it here shorter or you can uh, reduce this or, and, and uh, put this in the lathe, which is the, probably the best way to do it. If you try and do it by hand... You'll never get it actually perfectly even if you try and do it on the belt sander or something. You might get a little bit wobble. Let me show you how we address something like this in the lathe. Now, typically, uh, the base, the very bottom of the drill uh, bit, a lot of times is softer than the, the hardened part, the tip. But sometimes they harden the whole thing. So, you know, you, you always have to treat it as if it's hard because you don't want to mess up any drill bit. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to mount this here into the lathe and, and make sure the chuck captures a area around here, around the tip here, and give yourself enough room to work, you see here. And then you'll turn it on just to see how true it is. Perfectly true. Now, two ways you could do it. One way is you could take a file. This is a special lathe file. And if you notice, the instead of the angle of the, uh, of the flutes here, instead of being more this way, they're, they're steeper. And uh, this was given to me by uh, Jeff, Jeff and Dar a long time ago. And a lathe file is something you don't usually see, but it's uh, good to work on the lathe because it gives you a good cut. And we can give it a cut like this here as it's turning. But when you have those little nibs over here, it's always a good idea to try and use an old, um, an old bit in your, your, your lathe here and see if you can't knock off some of those tips. And we'll do that here.
Now you can see we took it right up here. We just took a little bit off here, but you still have a little bit here. And you can reduce this shank just enough that it's uh, that all this is gone. All your nibs are gone. Okay, you see now we reduced the shank. We got rid of any any uh, issues here that might uh, make this run untrue. Now, what you want to do, you don't want a perfectly smooth uh, shank going into your uh, chuck a lot of times. It grips a little better if it's a little rough. What I like to do, remember I told you whenever I belt, break a belt on the belt sander, I always save it. This is a perfect example of why you save it. Cover up your bed because you don't want any grit from the belt going onto the bed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start it up, and I'm just going to touch it here and uh, run it across. Just bend it over here, and just you'll see rough it up a little. There we go. That was uh, real time. Now you can see it. Look, Mike looks a little bit. This is very good to grip in the in the drill press. Let's try it out and see how it works. Okay, here you can see how nicely that came out. I did try and keep the size on here, the quarter inch, so that I know what size it is. But to reduce the shank now, this is running true. If you try and do this on a belt sander, you'll probably get some wobble. Uh, this is fine for, for regular work here. We'll chuck it into the drill press here, see how this, uh, how this uh, operates. I didn't touch the tip. Bring it up a little bit. Always raise your table so you're not using the quill as much. Make sure you sent it over the hole. And we're just gonna drill a cup just to see how it works. You can see nice holes, clean. Nice, and, and again, no reason to chuck these bits just because the, the end gets a little chowed up. They don't do this in machine shops and stuff because a lot of times they don't have time unless it's, although the old fashioned machinist always used to redress the tips of the bits or the backs of the bits if they get chewed up, they would never throw anything away until it was, until it was useless. But uh, today, I don't know, they just chuck them or whatever the case may be. So this was, uh, these are always savable when you chew up the back of the bits. Here's a bit that would typically typically be thrown out. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to do. First of all, you can see the, the shank is buggered up, but you really can't mount this into the lathe, you know, so you have to address that shaft. Also, um, you can see this is the type of bit. This don't have a screw to pull it in, but this is a, a force-fed bit. Actually, these are, are good to have. Let's see if we can get this working again. <laughs> Okay, we cleaned up the bit here. You could see we just uh, cleaned it up around the top here, took all the rust off the inside here, and uh, and we reduced the shank using the belt sand. Now, again, you'll never get it perfect, but you have to keep rotating it and have a good eye kind of to, uh, to get that round. That looks pretty good. Again, these were used in hand braces and whatnot, but we're going to use this in a drill press. And uh, to sharpen it up here, you don't want to take, there's two here, there's, you just want to make sure there's no burrs on the edge using a, uh, a jeweler's file. Just get off the burrs of the edge. And on the bottom here, you see here, you have to just make sure that you're going to curve it up because you want these chips to flow up and around into these flutes. Let's try it out on the drill press. Again, that's a little bit high speed for these type of drills, but since it has this kind of shank and uh, it doesn't have the screw type that'll suck it in, this is great for using it for a power application. Now, any wobble is going to be ex exaggerated because the power, you know, how fast it's going compared to uh, if you were using a hand drill. But let's try it out. Oh, what a nice hole, huh? 
Boy, that is beautiful. A little bit of tear out in the back here because, you know, again, for these bits, you're better off flipping it around, but look how nice and clean that is. So it does work. There's a bit that out of the garbage, back into the shop. Okay, so in closing, I can't tell you, the poor man's flea market has been very, very good to me. And I just love messing around with anything. You know, when you're in the shop, it don't matter what you do, you're just having a good time. And I'm, I'm so glad you can join me in these little adventures we have down here. And for those of you who enjoy motor restoration, uh, I will have another special upload for you tomorrow, an additional special upload special edition for Tuesday, which uh, I don't usually do. And then we'll be back Wednesday for our regular uh, regular uh, show series. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.